Exalted. Beyond being known for massive dice pools, combat scenarios that can be a major slog, and mind-numbingly massive charms lists, has some other crazy rules. Today, we're going to talk about two that I learned about in some games that I recently played in. With a little bit of tweaking, some of these could also be worked into other games. These systems are lore and facts, and leadership projects. Charms may help with these and make them more efficient, but they're ultimately not a prerequisite for them. Lore and Facts is, as I like to describe it, the rule where you can deface reality by being a big enough of a know-it-all. The details for it start on page 237. If a character has a lore rating of 3 plus a relevant lore specialty, that character can introduce a fact about the world, and then they roll for it, with the difficulty determined by the GM. While there are no standard difficulties, the core rulebook recommends this scale for how many successes you need to introduce a given fact. 1 to 4 successes if it's crucial and forwards the plot of the game, 5 to 7 if it's interesting but not mandatory for people to know, and 8 to 10 if it's one of the very secrets of the universe. The GM, of course, possesses veto power, and may work with the players to revise the proposed fact if it conflicts with either their current established facts or if it conflicts with the things the GM has planned for later. Just be sure to have this discussion BEFORE rolling for introducing a fact. Nothing is more of a drag than a GM that agrees to your fact, has you roll, and then completely overwrites what you wanted to introduce because they didn't do this before you made the roll. Furthermore, facts cannot be introduced later that contradict an earlier established fact. The lore of the world needs to be kept consistent. Another facet of lore and facts is that a fact can be challenged. With a lore rating of 3 or 1 plus a relevant specialty, a character can tell if something they're being told is incorrect or not. A fact that's challenged could be true except for one little detail, or mostly true, but with a slight exaggeration. For example, someone could say that urinating on a jellyfish sting is a method to treat it, and somebody with lore 3 or lore 1 plus a relevant specialty, pertaining to perhaps medicine or marine life, could challenge that. With just one success, they know there's something wrong with the statement. Jellyfish stings can be treated by peeing on them. Though with enough successes, either the GM would tell you what's wrong about the statement, or they can allow you to introduce what makes the fact incorrect as a fact. To carry on, there is a common remedy that works, but it's vinegar, not urine. The lore mechanics mean two things. First, a smart character can tell if they're being lied to, but only when it involves concrete factual information. Second, it allows players to invest themselves in the setting. The GM may have their own ideas about the world, but a clever GM could use this to their advantage and paint their world in broad strokes while still allowing the players to fill in all the smaller details. Here's some examples of how I've used this in the games that I've played in. First, temples like this typically had a chamber for storing ritual wine. This temple is unlikely to be an exception. From there, the party began searching for this chamber. We did, and the GM said it was filled with still-functioning first-age refrigeration that kept the ritual wine fresh. The intoxication it gave, by the way, allowed somebody to commune with Luna herself, though only the toughest of people could safely drink it, and even then, they would need an antidote shortly thereafter, or they would die. And ever since, my character's goal in that game has been to recreate the wine, although in a safer form with less lethality. Second, depending on the animals in question, milk is nutritionally similar to blood. It could be used to concoct something that a vampire could drink instead of blood. Cue the GM saying that if I can find a way to add iron to milk, it can be used to sustain a vampire character that they had introduced. Spinach and apricots happen to be rich in iron. Smoothies, anyone? Exalted is a game about big and important people doing big and important things. Rules for reflecting that are in Leadership and Projects, which is described on page 226. It can be tempting to resolve something big like rebuilding a neighborhood 
with a single craft roll to make new buildings and hope the adage of build it and they will come is true. Or to use a bureaucracy rule to sign all the right papers, hire all the right people, negotiate fair prices for materials, etc, etc. But reducing every major act like this to just one rule kind of makes something like combat feel much more lopsided, where in just one round of combat, you will make multiple rules. Enter the leadership and projects rules. On the one hand, it's more like guidelines on how to handle large-scale actions. On the other hand, it's a simple set of steps to consider, and could feasibly be introduced into any other game. The steps, paraphrased, are as follows. Possibility. Is it possible to complete the project? Possible or not, the GM should answer and consider the following questions. What would they need to do to make it possible? How long will it take for them to do? If it's impossible, what would they need to do to make it possible? This is Exalted, a game all about doing things that are impossible. So, as the sultry Billie Holiday once sang, The difficult, I'll do right now. The impossible, will take a little while. Building new houses and workshops and offices is great, but you need to actually have people using them to rebuild that town. So... A second reasonable step is to head out and find some willing workers who want a new lease on life. The second step is success and complications. If the necessary things are present, then the project succeeds. However, since conflict is the essence of drama, the GM can always introduce complications. These shouldn't be things that stop the project with no hope of moving forward. This is exalted, nothing is truly impossible. Complications should instead be additional tasks that may need to be done to keep the project moving. The building you previously constructed may need further renovations because of unsturdy foundation or some other reason. Like, one of the new people you hired to work in a restaurant may point out that you need more than just a dining room. You would also need a kitchen, which you forgot to build. Or it doesn't have enough space for all the utensils and appliances that they need to put into the kitchen to make the restaurant work. Plus, you need to hire more wait staff. A chef alone would only cut it in a hibachi grill house or teppanyaki restaurant. The third step is to deal with complications. This is where your merits would be useful. Some common uses for these include resources for paying bribes or hiring fees, allies for calling in favors, or followers for tasks that just plain need a lot of people. You could assign followers to deal with the renovation in your stead while you set out to find some people to help work the restaurant, either by scouting personally or calling in favors from an ally to find some people in need of a job for you. And the final step is the consequences. Succeed or fail, other characters are likely to take notice of what you're doing. They may like it. They may not. Either way, this is the perfect opportunity to introduce plot. Some local toughs in the neighborhood may not like that you're trying to open up a new business in their turf. So once the restaurant is completed, your next story beat is what to do about the tough guys. And thus, the game moves ever onward. So there you have it. Two of my favorite things that Exalted 3rd Edition introduces. They're simple enough that, frankly, you can introduce them to any other game in some form or fashion. For example... One of my least favorite games, Dungeons & Dragons, could actually have these systems adapted into it fairly easily. Within D&D 5th Edition, there are a few skills that reflect characters having knowledge in specific areas. Thus, the prerequisite for using lore and facts system from Exalted could just as easily be being proficient in that skill, and successfully introducing a fact could require a skill roll passing a certain threshold, depending on the obscurity of the fact. And projects in leadership are quite simply, a to-do list for a quest line. Thanks for watching. If you found this interesting or helpful, give me a thumbs up like. And if you want to learn more about Exalted or other great role-playing games, check out some of my other videos, or hit the subscribe button for me. With all that said, I am Arotar Shadel, and I will see you all next time.